I'm Shingo Okawa. Uh, I'm an athlete uh, ambassador with Gravel, uh, an Italian hardware manufacturer. We uh, specialize in building uh, tools and crampons for Alpine. Uh And today, uh, I'm here to talk about, uh, in lieu of ice festivals, uh, I'd like to deliver uh, some of the material that I cover in my ice clinics. I typically am invited, uh, and on behalf of Gravel, invited to instruct at some of the, the national and regional events throughout the country. And of course, this year with COVID, uh, a lot of those events have been postponed. So uh, again, in lieu of those festivals, which can't wait to see everybody at next year, uh, we're going to try to do this uh, with a bit of technology and a bit of remoteness. But uh, I wanted to discuss today uh, just some of the, 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 the more common, uh, I guess, problems, if you will, that we tend to diagnose in our intro to ice climbing uh, clinics. Uh, now, uh, intro to ice climbing assumes that my participants uh, oftentimes have never ever uh, thrown an ice tool or worn crampons or, or indeed the boots that uh, are paired with them. So oftentimes they're demoing equipment. And uh, today I'd like to just kind of uh, talk about the most common things that we diagnose as sort of problems in uh, both form and technique that might be helpful for some of those folks who are getting into ice climbing this year and who might not have the liberty to attend one of these festivals this year. So the first thing that we want to discuss uh, would be uh, handwear. One of the very, very uh, common uh, things that I see uh, in my ice clinics, a lot of folks aren't uh, very, very well versed in how to grip an ice tool, and then also what kind of uh, handwear to pair with ice climbing. I want to discuss both issues very, very briefly here and talk about some of the things that uh, are kind of the top issues that I see in my clinic. Now, first and foremost, let's talk about handwear. Uh, it's a bit antithetical, but uh, of course we're ice climbing and uh, ice is frozen water, so it assumes that it's quite cold outside, the air temperatures are cold. Now, you may wanna uh, carry yourself with a nice warm, thick glove, uh, especially with the amount of time that we spend outside when we are ice climbing, but oftentimes the problem with ice climbing with a very thick, insulated glove is that uh, we don't, we don't afford ourselves much control over a tool that we're actually trying to move rather quickly. Right? Much like a tennis racket or a golf club, oftentimes we're trying to swing or throw these things uh, at, at rates of speed such that if we pair ourselves with a much thicker, uh, much warmer glove, we feel as if in order to control or feel as if we have control over that tool, we have to grip the tool much, much harder. And oddly enough, gripping a tool harder forces more blood out of our hands, which in turn makes us quite a bit colder. Uh, and that's one of the very, very uh, or key issues that we tend to diagnose first in our clinics. A lot of folks will bring their ski glove when they're first starting to ice climb, and they haven't really put too much thought into what they want on their hands. Now, the system that I typically use when I'm ice climbing uh, is a multi-glove system. On longer ice climbs, uh, especially multi-pitch ice climbs where I may be climbing multiple rope lengths off the ground, I'll sometimes carry up to four pairs of different gloves. But at a very minimum, I would say, uh, even for uh, shorter ice cragging situations like what you might find a URA, uh, I'll have a, at a very minimum three pairs. Now that usually includes uh, two pairs for lead climbing, something very, very thin and dexterous. Now, it's important to note that dexterity and warmth are kind of uh, on opposite ends of the spectrum. Typically when you have a very, very thin, uh, say, latex glove, you have incredible dexterity, but obviously not a very, very warm layup. Whereas you may have a very, very thick mitten that's heavily insulated with down or a synthetic film material, and those are terribly warm, but not very good dexterity, as you might imagine. So for the sake of ice climbing, because I want to maintain the, the utmost control of my tool that I'm trying to move at a high rate of speed and as well as kind of manipulate uh, pieces of, of climbing protection. Uh, I want something that's going to be extremely dexterous so I'm not fumbling my gear. Now I'll typically climb with two pairs of very very thin gloves. One pair is almost always next to my chest in my internal pockets of my, my outerwear to dry whereas uh, I'm climbing with the one pair. And then my third pair is usually an auxiliary, much warmer pair. Sometimes they're mittens, sometimes they're just warm gloves. It's not a pair of handwear that I'll switch out whenever I reach the belay. And that's what I'll be wearing whenever I'm belaying my partners to the stance. But it's really, really important to find a glove that affords you the proper fit, the fingers are all the correct length, 
something that, again, it's not going to be terribly warm, a glove this thin, but we also want to make sure that the fit is going to be nice and snug so that we feel as if we have the utmost control over the grips of our tool.